Hello everyone and welcome to Golden Artist Colors. My name is Greg Watson. I'm a materials and applications specialist here at Golden in Williamsburg. Uh, this month on social media we've been looking at a variety of products that we are calling Studio Elements. And these are essential products that artists have in the studio. Uh, they are cherished for their uh, versatility and for what they bring to the painting practice. Uh, one of the products you will see amongst the studio elements, and you can see more if you look on the uh, black bar there, justpaint.org slash studio elements, if you want to learn more. One of the items you'll see on that uh, list is titanium white. So uh, titanium white is a classic go-to for a lot of oil painters. Uh, but in order to provide you with a little context and to give you a sense for the, um, the, the offerings of white that Williamsburg has, we wanted to take a look at um, the seven products that we have that fall into the white category. Um, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to look at um, titanium white, safflower titanium white, titanium zinc white. This is a blended color. Porcelain white, this is only ground in safflower oil. Uh, flake white, flake white in safflower, and then zinc white. Okay, so first thing I think we'll do is we will look at a card that um, is from an article that we recently wrote uh, describing the subtle differences between Williamsburg whites. These are drawdowns. They are six mil. It's about the thickness of two paste pieces of office paper drawn down in uniform thickness over a card that is uh, black and white. You can see that black ends there, and then the white section of the card starts here. Okay. Um, on the left-hand side here, you have the safflower uh, titanium white, and the linseed oil titanium white. Now these had been sitting in a portfolio for quite some time and they tend to, they, the colors, oil colors tend to yellow a little bit when they're in dark storage. That's called dark yellowing. So after we look through these we'll talk about the dark yellowing a little bit. We brought them back to full color slightly but we wanted to leave it a little different to showcase how the safflower colors do tend to stay a little brighter white than the linseed oil based colors. So safflower titanium white, regular titanium white. Notice how you cannot see really the difference between the black uh, under and the white under that titanium white. It's a very opaque color, right? Um, not much in the ways of translucency there. The titanium zinc blend has a little zinc in it. Zinc is a very translucent white. And so you begin to see that differentiation ever so slightly there. Titanium zinc has a very a unique quality in that those two pigments, when placed together, when, when formulated together, have a synchronous relationship where they become very white. Titanium on its own is not as white. Zinc on its own, which you could see at the end here, also a little yellow. But when you put them together in uh, an oil paint, they do tend to stay very bright white. We'll talk about the drawbacks of zinc here in just a moment. Okay, porcelain white. Porcelain white is a unique uh, pigment called lithopone. It's a, uh, a, a, a co-pigment of barium sulfate and zinc sulfide. Um, it has some level of translucency to it and uh, medium tinting strength. This is safflower flake and regular flake and linseed oil. You can see how the safflower flake is a little lighter in uh, less yellow, brighter white. It's always got a little slightly creamy quality in comparison to the, the titanium colors, but um, the safflower is a brighter white. You can see how translucent this color is. Flake white, it's very cherished for its ability to uh, make lovely flesh tones or subtle gradient color that's not washed out. We'll look at that a little bit here, how it, how it transforms a color with a little less of a chalky look than the titanium. And then finally, zinc white at the end. You can see that zinc is the most translucent color we have in the palette uh, in terms of whites, okay? It yellows a little bit on its own. It has a little bit of a yellow cast, but beautiful translucency. Okay, let's talk about a couple things here. While we're talking about zinc, let's put it on the table. 
zinc has been uh, found over the years, and it's something that goes way back to uh, the beginnings of zinc, um, has been known to cause embrittlement in oil paint. That means the paint becomes uh, hard, fast, okay? So it becomes harder much more quickly than most other colors, okay? So the zinc oxide is something that for the longest time we had in our uh, blends. And in about 2018, I think, we decided to take the zinc out of the blends and replace all those, uh, the whites in those colors with titanium. But we still carry zinc white and titanium zinc white in 150 ml tubes with the, with the warning label on here that says zinc oxide is linked to embrittlement and cleaving of oil paint. Okay, so a little caveat about uh, zinc when it's used because it becomes hard, um, keep it in the upper layers of your painting, use it thinly. And when using zinc white, uh, adding some oil binder, something like a stand oil that's very flexible, can uh, benefit the uh, paint and help it from becoming brittle. At least that's what some of the conservation research is telling us. We're still looking at this and deciding what is the benefit of zinc? How, how much zinc can we put in there before it becomes a problem? Um, and um, can it benefit the long-term stability of an oil paint film? Okay, so. That's zinc white. You'll see why people use zinc white in just a minute here because it's quite beautiful. Um, so let's look at a couple mixtures that we have uh, with permanent crimson. These are one-to-one -one mixtures, one part paint to one part um, white. Okay, so you can see over here on the left, this is the safflower titanium and the regular titanium these colors have the most sort of chalky, um, strongest tinting strength of the white, and they become the most obvious bright pink of the group, okay? The safflower, and these are one-to-one -one by eye. They're not weighed out or anything like that. That would become complicated because lead is heavier than uh, titanium, for example, or porcelain. So a one-to-one -one measurement in that way wouldn't be um, accurate either. So we just eyeballed it. But you can see how it chalks out the color. As we move down the line here, we go to the titanium zinc. Let me just take a sneak peek here. Yep, just to make sure I'm on track. This is the titanium zinc. That zinc provides a little bit more, a um, uh, little bit less tinting strength, right? So you start to see the red come through. Porcelain white. Uh, the porcelain begins to have a characteristic of its own. It's really luminous and, and brilliant, and the color is very saturated. Um, flake safflower, flake titanium. Now you can see that that permanent crimson is taking on um, a real um, um, strong um, quality in the, in the tint, okay? You're seeing a deep, deep red here. And then the zinc white. And you could see the translucency of these. Let me just turn that card up a little bit. I want to make sure that you can see that that... Thanks, Todd. Yeah, that's that right there. So you can see that sort of the black versus the white on those. That's telling you that you have a little bit more translucency in these colors here. Let's say you didn't want to go for the zinc and you wanted some of that translucency. Consider trying flake white. Great white option, beautiful density. It makes for beautiful color mixtures that are, are really versatile. So these are one-to-one -one with permanent crimson. And this is a little bit of a, um, a lighter value. This shows what happens when you add more white into those mixtures. The safflower titanium, titanium, and titanium zinc all start to read pretty similar at this ratio. Still the porcelain's coming out with its own kind of unique personality at one to one. Gotta get into that porcelain. It's a beautiful color. Try some of that in your palette. If you're looking for uh, something to try that's not uh, you know, lead-based like the flake white, you know, maybe you go to the porcelain. Flake white, really warm, okay, compared to the, the zinc next to it, which has a real cool quality to it. This flake is, is a warm um, look, warm color quality. It's cherished for that uh, warmth right there. And then zinc, which has this cool, rich, kind of uh, cool, uh, almost tending toward icy pink color. Okay, so that's the permanent crimson mixed with some of these whites. And now we can take a look at um, 
maybe what these whites sort of look like in the wet state. So I'll bring a new card over. We made these gray cards just for today's event so that you could see the white on gray. And this is a tight, this is a, uh, a, a tight board here. So I'm going to try to keep it clean as we make our way across. You can see I have some labels down here at the bottom for both of us so that I can be on track and you can see what we're doing too. So titanium, this is the safflower, titanium zinc, porcelain, flake white, safflower flake, and zinc as we go across. You know what, I think it's going to be easiest to come from this side. So let's start with the zinc. And I'm going to take just a little bit of this and bring it across that um, black stripe there. As I pull it a little tighter, you could see that there's translucency there. And even when I put some pressure or put some paint on the surface, you could still see through there to the gray and the black. OK? Bam, let's go right down the line here. This is the safflower flake white. Flake is, is um, pretty dense feeling paint. Uh, I love using it on its own with, with color or blended with a little titanium white. It's often nice to sort of modify the titanium with a little flake to give it a, um, a touch of translucency. I want to put these right up against one another. How about that? Let's see if we can do that. And, uh, and have the density of that color. The feeling, the density of that, of that flake is really nice. The way it feels on the, on the knife or on the brush. Look at the warmth here on the regular flake white. And you could see a little bit of this translucency coming through. Um, Porcelain. Porcelain for safflower uh, color feels really stiff sometimes. So it's got that sniffness, stiffness. But look at the white compared to these. The flake white next to the porcelain. I'm hoping you could see how clean that looks. So when you're looking for that crisp, clean white, maybe you're a, a landscape painter and you need to get those brilliant clouds. It has to look like it's just popping out of the sky. Um, try the porcelain, it's great. Titanium zinc white. Now this looks yellowish, kind of has a creamy cast right now. Not a lot of translucency. I practically have to scrape it clean off the board in order to see that black line. So it's more on the opaque side of things. But it's creamy at the moment. In the end though, when that dries, that'll dry to a very crisp, clean white that'll stay white over time, okay? The titanium zinc, remember, it has that relationship where it stays beautifully white over the long term. This is safflower titanium white. Mm, lovely. One thing to think about with the safflower colors, and I'm talking about the safflower titanium white, the porcelain, and the uh, safflower flake. Safflower oil, it, it's, it's a, it, is right on the verge of being a drying oil. So there's something about linseed oil, for example, is an oil that dries very well, it dries quickly, it's really durable over the long term. Safflower colors, like the safflower titanium, the porcelain, the safflower flake, they, um, the, the safflower oil can remain a little sticky when used in thicker films. So whenever using the safflower colors, use them for what they're good at. They're good at staying nice and bright and white over the long term. Use them in the upper layers of your painting or if you're doing a la prima. You can work those colors into uh, your pieces, but use them thinly. You know, think about using them uh, with colors that where you're putting a lot of white in, you want it to stay true. Um, and, uh, and you can replace your linseed oil colors with those safflower colors as you get into the upper layers of your piece. So I think we have a couple questions that I want to uh, ask. Allison's going to uh, share with us here and we'll... Thanks, Greg. Mm -hmm. um, so the first question is, can you tell us how these demonstration boards were prepared? The, the demonstration boards, these, these white, uh, typically we use a white stripe board like this one here. Um, these are gator board. Um, it's like a foam core that's got a, like a resinous uh, paper coating on it. I don't exactly know what that uh, surface is, but it's very rigid. Is it rigid? It's got a clay coat on it. Okay. And thank you. And um, we've just painted them. 
We've put some tinted gesso with, uh, with a black gesso line. We use some tape and we just put them right, right on there. So they're great for testing. Great. If you're going to do some color testing, use something like this and then you could stack them and have them in your, uh, your test kit. Thanks. And we have a question about porcelain. Uh, let me read this out loud. One second. So porcelain is made with what? And if not zinc or titanium, are there any issues or cons to it? Um, so porcelain white um, is a co-precipitate co of barium sulfate and zinc sulfide. It's a PW5 is what it's called. So the porcelain white um, has been around for quite a long time. It was uh, isolated as a pigment in, I don't know, 1870s or something like that. They were desperate to find white pigments that functioned um, well, that had good opacity, uh, that, that weren't toxic like lead. Lead pigment was the primary pigment for the longest time. They found zinc white, um, uh, then it was known to become brittle uh, over time. And uh, it was a little translucent. Um, and then porcelain white came around. Porcelain white had some issues in the very early years of its use where it darkened in the presence of UV light. You got to imagine some of these things were used for um, commercial applications like painting structures and things like that. So um, when they were applying this type of uh, pigment in the exterior, it was darkening. Okay, but they found a way to stabilize the porcelain by, I don't know, somehow precipitating the pigment with some sort of cobalt salts or something and in it it stabilized that pigment. It's no longer uh, vulnerable to UV light. And we've tested this inside and out with our uh, light fastness testing and we've seen no issues with the UV problem. So it's a great pigment. The only thing is we grind it in safflower. It does not do as well in linseed. It, it, it expresses quite a bit of yellowing. Um, but uh, so the safflower colors, like I mentioned, should be used thinner and uh, in the upper layers of your piece. So if that works for you, then porcelain might be a good option. Great, thank you. Um, sure. And we'll let you continue. And then if people have additional questions, they can put those in the comments and we will try to answer them. Some of them live and then the rest are materials and application specialists will answer in the chat. Perfect. So great, let's look at um, some cards, I think, that will show us these colors or some of these colors um, mixed with a few of these options. So I'm just going to see if we can get these all onto this board here. These are little canvas boards, okay, just little four by six canvas boards or five by seven, whatever they are. I don't know. Um, we'll, do them, we'll do them three at a time here. That have, um, this is French Terra Verde, okay, this is the color right out of the tube. This is Viridian, and this is Prussian Blue. What you have here is right out of the tube, uh, scraped kind of thin, and then I did like a little rubbing of that color on the canvas board to see if I can see the undertone, the glow of that color. This is mixed with flake white, titanium white, zinc white, and porcelain white. So look at that. And it was try, again, we tried to do a one-to-one -one ratio here so that you can get a sense for what these colors, how they transform when they're mixed with these whites. Uh, flake white, titanium white, zinc white. I probably should have done it in a reverse order where I put titanium up top, then flake, then zinc, because you can almost see that there's a step down there. The tinting strength of titanium is the strongest. It gives you the sort of the creamiest look. Uh, flake starts to sort of have more of a expression of the color with that one-to-one -one mixture. And then by the time you get to zinc, there's a lot of Prussian starting to uh, um, express through this mixture. And I can't think of the, a good word to say that. Um, so, but it's also a different type of color quality in terms of temperature. You have um, warmth in the flake, a little bit of coolness in the um, titanium and zinc. And the porcelain down here is somewhere in between flake white and titanium, okay? But how beautiful. You could make a whole painting just ranging different whites with these colors. Same thing with the Viridian. 
check it out, flake white, titanium white, this is the zinc, and the porcelain white. You could see, or at least I can in my view here, how warm that flake looks with the viridian. I love viridian. We have our viridian single pigment, beautiful, um, beautiful tra translucent sort of like color. Terra Vert comes through. The warmth really shows in the flake, the titanium, uh, the zinc, and the porcelain. And then we'll just show you these other ones just because I have them here and it's fun to see color mixed in, and then we'll mix a little bit of um, Corbet Green in with some of these same colors. Cobalt Yellow. Who doesn't love Cobalt Yellow? This is like the, the um, most unique, beautiful color I think that um, I've come across since coming here to uh, Williamsburg. Cobalt, this is the uh, uh, pulled thin, but as you start to tint this out, it moves from this mustardy color to this kind of canary yellow. Okay, flake, titanium, zinc, porcelain, Burnt Sienna, Manganese Violet. Manganese Violet is a great purple. It, I can't say enough for it. It dries really fast and, you know, there's only so many kind of semi-opaque or uh, opaque, I can't remember what this is classified as, purple options on the palette there. So, Manganese Violet, that's a real winner, okay? So let's mix a little Corbet Green into some of these uh, whites and see what we got. I only picked five whites to do with the Corbet Green because it, it would get uh, crazy having all seven on there. And to be quite honest, the, uh, the flake white, when, it, when it's in safflower or in um, uh, linseed oil, it, it plays pretty similarly with, uh, in mixtures. So I don't know that it would be um, that dr dramatic of a difference there. So let's start with the zinc down here. And this is Corbet Green. Corbet Green's a blend. Let me show the Corbet Green to you real quick. Corbet Green is a blend. It's got uh, a, a natural um, uh, iron oxide red. It has a Prussian blue and a PY65, which is like our uh, um, yellow, permanent yellow medium. Okay. So we're going to do the zinc. So we can imagine that this one-to-one -one mixture of Corbet Green and zinc white is going to be pretty dark, right? The zinc doesn't have a lot of tinting strength. And it's going to show a lot of that Corbet Green. So you've got twice as much paint here with that zinc and Corbet Green mixture. You can put a little medium in that and use it nice and thin in one of your landscapes or a background or something like that. I'm pulling it over that black line. I got to pull it pretty tight over that line in order to start to see that color there. That black showing through. Get some napkins going here. Hold on. Okay. And tell us what kind of white you use in the comments there. You use, everybody uses white. They say white can make up to 40% of a painting. And in many cases, it's probably even more than that. You know, but, um, you know, 40%, that's a, that's a lot of material. And if you're going to use that much white, how fun would it be to find ways to use different types of white in the painting? You know, maybe you use flake for your underpainting, and then you use porcelain for some of your upper layers. Or you use titanium, and you come on real strong in that lower layers and give it a, a nice creamy look, and then come up top with some uh, flake to warm it up. You can see, I am hoping, it's almost like the yellow begins to show itself a little bit more in the uh, color mixture with the flake because it has a bit of warmth there. This is the porcelain. Porcelain, as we saw just with the regular drawdown, seems like it's the coolest white that we have going on the palette here. I'm just going to say that outright. I think the porcelain is the coolest white we have. And you can check out an article we have on our justpaint.org website. Maybe Kathy's already posted it, but it's about the, uh, the different whites. And you can go through and, and see what we say about those. That's the porcelain white. And then Thai zinc. And this is, this is very similar to titanium white, the titanium zinc. It just has that... that uh, the virtue of, of staying brighter white. So while you're mixing that, I have a comment, a couple comments and a couple questions. 
um, one of them is about zinc titanium mix. Does that mitigate the brittleness of the zinc? We, when we did the, uh, the reformulation of all of our mixed colors, we lowered the zinc content and the titanium zinc blend to about 2%. Um, in hopes that that type of level would be um, more likely to mitigate the issue with the zinc. We are looking at a, a series of uh, tests that we had put aside around the time when we first started looking into this. So we have some samples that are, I don't know, eight, almost eight years old from some earlier samples where we used a variety of levels of zinc. And we're going to show some uh, updates of those test results, hopefully at the end of the year. Does it mitigate it? We think that having extremely low levels of zinc in the film can actually benefit the film in that it can provide some long-term stability. What that level is, we're, we're actually not entirely sure at this point. So we're still um, investigating. But Less zinc is certainly better than more zinc in the, in the blend, as far as we can tell. So before I ask the next two questions, what mm -hmm. was the last blend? This was titanium. So titanium, titanium, zinc. You know, it's funny. Sometimes when I blend the titanium zinc in there, I feel like it has more tinting strength than the titanium, but it could just been that the pile was a little bigger coming out of that 150 ml. OK. So a couple more. Um, the comment with a question, I've never used the safflower blends with your whites. I swear by your pure whites. How do those blended whites affect drying time? How do the blended whites affect drying time? The, well, the pigments in the blended colors, the blended colors or the, so um, let me just try to answer that question. Um, how do the blended whites, I, I think we have a whole range of colors that are, uh, that are made with a little white in them. And um, pigment does have an impact on uh, dry time. So depending on the pigments we use in those colors can impact the, uh, the drying of them. Um, we do add dryer when necessary if a uh, Organic, synthetic organic pigment is, is really reluctant to dry. We'll put dryer in there to get it, you know, moving in that direction. It just sometimes needs a little uh, catalyst to get things rolling. Um, so it does vary. You can find um, our dry time chart on uh, Williamsburg website, um, uh, williamsburgoils.com. And, and Kathy, maybe you'll put it in the, in the chat. So you can follow that link and look at the dry times there. And, and cross-reference the whites on their own with, with some of the blended colors that have white in them. I don't know if that answered, but we hope we, hope we, we did steer you right there. Great. No, and I I'll ask one more question, and I'll, I'll come on and say hi. So it's you Allison. can see the person on the other side of the, <laughs> the space over here that Greg keeps looking at. Um, if you add a little yellow ochre to titanium, does it approach flake in mixing? Hmm, that's a great question. Uh, it, it'll still have that creamy uh, look, I think. So by the time you add enough yellow ochre in there to start to um, give it a little bit of that warmth and then uh, the, the, the um, translucency, I believe you'd be, you'd be looking at a really yellowish uh, color and you'd still have that real creamy look. If you wanted to get somewhere closer to flake, a little yellow ochre with some extender medium, maybe. The extender medium is like a filler product that we have. It has some marble dust in it and some barium sulfate. And those are some uh, inert solids that sometimes we put into our different colors to provide better drying or less tacky surface. We make a medium that's oil mixed with those two pigments and it's essentially, it's like putting a little filler in your titanium white. And it does have a lot of translucency to it. So adding that into your tie white will give you a little bit more translucency. And then you can add a little yellow ochre in there and you might get something similar to that. I love it. I think it'd be a great uh, experiment. Uh, try it out and uh, let us know how you, how you like it. Okay. Any other questions while we're, while we're um, wrapping up here? That's uh, all for now. But if you have additional questions, you can yep. put them in the chat. And uh, so that pretty much wraps this um, episode up. I think that it's 
been fun mixing some color with you and looking at these whites. Be sure to st check out the, uh, the Studio Elements um, page. And you, some of this information will be uh, there for you to review. And we appreciate you being with us. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks so much.